And welcome once again to Community Focus. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in this morning. Also, a special thank you to uh, a young lady named Pat Morcom of uh, Partialville, known for their great apple cider. And also a hello to uh, Maxine Kelly of Fenton. Uh, this morning, we're going to focus on a group of students here at Bentley Junior High in Burton, Michigan. Now, what makes this group so special is the fact that they're going to graduate. They'll be the graduating class in the year 2000. So this morning, we'll meet the future. We'll uh, hear about their hopes, their plans, their dreams for the future. And we'll do that by meeting some of the faculty here as well. Starting off with a gentleman named Joe Conzer. You're the head of this Motley crew, right? Well, I'm one of the teachers. Yes, I am, Tom. It wasn't too long ago, uh, Mr. Conzer, that you and I sat in a desk similar to one of these. And, you know, we kind of looked ahead to the future. Uh, at that time, I'd like to ask you, did, did you think that somewhere down the line you'd be in the field of education? No, no way, shape, or form. I didn't become a teacher or become interested in teaching until uh, third year of college. So the question is, what, what did you want to do back then? Oh, as probably half of these guys want to now, they want to become Tom Cruise and fly an F-15. Is that true, gang? Yeah! Let's talk about the educational system today. You know, uh, much has changed from the days uh, when you and I were going to school. How, how much has it changed? Oh, you want to get into politics? No, I, uh, let's not worry about talk about politics in the state of Michigan and funding and all that sort of jazz. Uh, but that does, a, that does play an important part, right? Oh, very much so. Very much so. Uh, so much of what we do, so much of how our staffing is decided depends on how much money we get from the state of Michigan each year. Uh, that's uh, a very important part, is mm -hmm. the state financing and that kind of stuff. Um, as to how it's changed, well, for me it's changed much because I went to a Catholic school, and that's a totally different ball of wax. For one school. year, yours truly also. Ah, uh, yes. We're two Catholic boys. Yes, that's yes. right. <laughs> but anyways, that's another story. Yeah, but uh, there is a, a, a different mindset in a Catholic school. There is a, a different structure. Uh, children, if, if, if we are on the right track, you and I both had to wear a certain attire every day to school, right? A uniform? Mm -hmm. We had a stringent dress code. Mine was a uh, light blue Light blue shirt and uh, one of those uh, plaid ties. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yes. mine was black. But anyway, that. Let's let's talk about the size of the classrooms. Have they increased? Have you noticed an increase in the size over the past few years? I believe it it varies from class to class, meaning how many kids are in are in the group as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, we vary here from anywhere from the low twenties up to the low thirties. Uh, this bunch, because of numbers and how the numbers worked out, um, the kids this year are in the low 20s. Um, this bunch, if anybody decides to count, oh, we've got about 25, 30 kids here. This is a, uh, a conglomeration, if you will, of the fifth grade students from the various sections that we put together. You know, I have uh, a question I'm sure a lot of our viewers have is how long you've been teaching? Me personally, this is my 21st year. Okay. Have you noticed a difference in the children's attitude towards education? <laughs> oh, boy. That's a, that's a big question. Huh? Difference in attitude. Generally speaking, uh, they do come, seem to be coming less motivated, less prepared than mm -hmm. what I have over the last, over the, uh, since from the beginning of my uh, tenure as a teacher. Now, whether or not that is... Oh, society or whatever, maybe it's just me getting old, but it does seem to be a lot, a little more difficult job. The gang here at uh, Bentley Junior High, and we're going to take some questions, and uh, we'll stand back now and see if anybody has anything that they'd like to ask. Hmm? Huh? Okay, this gentleman here, and your name is? Houston Tipton. Okay, Houston, and, and what would you like to ask this morning? I want to ask you, how, how was the education when you was young? It was, a, I think, from talking to uh, your generation, that it was a lot more strict. Uh, I, I could probably, we just spoke with Mr. Conzer, and it was a lot more, uh, to me, it was a lot more, more tougher than what it is today. Uh, we, and my family, uh, my family structure, one of the things that was placed high was education. How about you? Yeah. When you go home, does mom and dad, do, do they make sure that, that you go to your room and study? Mm, no, I go to the kitchen table. And you study there. But you do get your homework done, right? Mr. Conzer, how, how is this guy in your class? Homework-wise? Yeah. 
homework wise, he does a pretty good job. We're not 100 percent, but he's uh, he's uh, he's doing pretty good. Okay, uh, here's a question thrown out to you, and if anyone would like to answer this, what do you like or dislike about school? Anybody? Okay, this this little guy right over here. You'll have to to bide with me today, folks. We only have one camera and a long cord for a microphone. You are? Reed Roberts. Mr. Roberts, uh, what do you like about school? Well, I like that uh, we get recess and gym and the fun times about it and lunch. Well, what about studies? I mean, what, what, are there any particular classes that you enjoy? Mm, math. Science is pretty fun, and sp spelling in English. What do you hope to do som somewhere down the road? What do you want to become? Well, I wanted to become a Air Force in the Air Force. Well, you want to fly. You want to be a flyer? That, that takes a lot of math. Do you know that? And probably, since I like sports, probably a baseball player. So there's going to be, one day you're going to have to make a decision here, right? Well, I, I think either way, you still, you know, school's an important part, right? Yeah. Okay, what, gang, what do you dislike about school? Hmm? Okay, and this lady over here, your name is? Candace Brook. Candace, what, what don't you like about school? Um, some of the classes. Such as? Um, science. You don't like science? It's okay, but I just don't like sitting through it because it's kind of boring. <laughs>And welcome back once again to Community Focus with uh, the class of Bentley Junior High School, Burton, Michigan. This group will graduate in the year 2000. Just think of it. These guys and gals are our future. And guiding them through their future is a gentleman named R.C. Wilcox. Mr. Wilcox, you teach science? Science, junior high, seventh and eighth grade, correct. And uh, the question I have for you is, how is it working with uh, these bright young minds? Well, I think, you know, and I have to kind of reiterate what Mr. Condor said, I think the motivational factor as far as our students, you know, sometimes we just can't get them into that mode as far as the work workload, the work task. And I think, you know, you look at their habits and you say, okay, here's what you've got. Uh, it's called performance, and some of them just don't get the type structure they probably need at home. Mom and dad, maybe because of the way the economy is going today, both mother and father working, that... Uh, uh, they might not be there for the kids. I'd have to say that that's a very big factor. You know, you look at them and you say a student comes in and you say, first thing you kind of look at is his attitude and whether or not they're really enthused. And You can kind of overcome that factor, I'm sure. Uh, but if you don't get uh, the student that gets that structure, it makes it very difficult to get the task done. Did, would, you, would you say that uh, it, learning, I've heard that learning begins from the time of a child before they even go to uh, kindergarten. Do you think that that's an important fact for the moms and dads out there? I, I'd have to say that you're absolutely correct and that uh, you make sure that they have an inquisitive mind. I'm speaking in reference to that of not only just science, but uh, when you get a student that comes in, like in my classroom, they don't have the inquisitive mind. You say, boy, we've got a real problem to work with at first. Mm -hmm. And it boils down to, to the attitude again. I asked Mr. Conzer this, and I ask you this. Uh, the time when you were seated in one of these desks many moons ago, uh, did you think that the, the educational system was a lot more strict than what it is compared to now? I, I concur with you in that the structure was altogether different. It's a situation where if I were to go back and I were to kind of relate to these students, you know, I look at them in the class of 2000, I say, boy, uh, the key is, you know, the problem solvers. Back then it really wasn't a problem solving attitude or atmosphere that you had. It was more of a, well, let's see if you can reiterate some facts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The whole thing that I, I can recall from my time was uh, that it was the, my family had structured it that education was the key, the real key to get somewhere in this life. Do you think that uh, the parents today place that, as much emphasis with their children today on education? I would have to say that uh, that's a real factor that, and that possibly they don't. It's uh, not number one in their priorities. 
uh, and you look at the student and you say, well, why is it that we can't get the job done? And like some of the students have mentioned as far as their study habits, they just don't, number one, maybe have the, the facilities, or number two, and probably foremost, is they just don't have somebody that gives them that prodding that, to get the job done for whatever class it might be. Okay. Well, we have, we have some questions here coming out from, uh, from uh, this group of the year 2000. Let me throw one out to you, and uh, uh, that is, for, for the kids that might be having trouble learning, do you think that maybe an after-school study group would help? And, and if so, would you go to it? Anybody? Yeah. 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 Have, they, have they thought about doing that here at this school? We do have, excuse me, we do have small groups at uh, after-school study sessions. Correct. But do, do, the, do the teachers assist in this, or are these children who are fairly well along in their studies that help out other, other students? Adventures, it's more of an open-ended situation. You have that opportunity. It's not one of those that's published as such, you know, you go to such and such a room if you need help with this or that. Right. But you're right, it is something of which, we, you know, say, uh, the student that's having some problems, they need somebody to kind of guide them along. You know, one thing I, I wanted to bring up to you, you're, you're a teacher, and I'm sure you must have run into this, when a student is failing, when the, you, you see that the child needs help, and you've confronted the parent with this, what is their reaction? Hmm, interesting question. Uh, hopefully it's going to be positive, and most generally it is. And I would, I would say that nine times out of ten, uh, mom, dad, or whomever, they might say, well, geez, I really don't know what to do. So you just kind of sit down and you, you troubleshoot as a group. Let's see, you know, if we can resolve this problem and come up with some means to enable them to feel, number one, good about themselves and know that they can get the task done. Mm -hmm. Okay, gang, I'm going to turn the camera over to you now. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. And uh, someone out there, I'm sure, has uh, something that they like to say to our audience this Sunday morning. And who would that be? Hmm? We all had our hands raised up during the commercial break, and everybody had all these great ideas. And boy, oh boy, now that we got the cameras rolling, well, we have a young lady here. And your name is? Lisa Hudson. And Lisa, how old are you? I'm 10. OK. Lisa, what do you want to do with your life? I want to be a fighter pilot. A fighter pilot? You mean you want to fly those jet planes, huh? Mm-hmm. OK. How do you think you're going to achieve that? I think we need a good education. I think there should be, I think we should like take the goofballs out of the class and put them in a different class. You know, that's a good point. That is really a good point because do you find that there are kids within your classroom that, that uh, don't help you with your studies? I mean, that they break up the study time? Hmm? Yep. Well, what do you want to do with those kids? Like have a separate teacher and teach them like a real strict one and teach them and then like have a nicer teacher teach us mm -hmm. well I, I'm sure we got some nice teachers in today right 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 and you you said the right words there <laughs> okay and anybody else somebody out there have a question huh okay this young man from Kansas City uh, your name is stand up come on Matt Rose Matt Rose and how old are you 11 Matt, what do you want to do somewhere down the road? Be a teacher. Oh, okay. And who influenced you uh, with that? Is there somebody within this school? Yeah, but she's dead right now. She died about a week ago, about four to five months ago. And her name is? I can't remember. She was my old kindergarten teacher. Mm. Okay. Matt, why, why do you want to be a teacher? Mm, to help kids. Do you feel that... Uh, and this, this goes out to any of you here at, at Bentley Junior High. Do you feel that the teachers here are doing a fairly good job? Yes. 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 Just a little bit louder, gang, okay? Yes! Okay. <laughs> How do you think you're going to achieve this? Mm, by doing all my work and trying real hard. When you go home, when you, after you've left the school and you go home, do you spend a lot of time studying? Not that much. Well, then how do you hope to be a teacher? Mm, start studying. Well, uh, are you, now look into the camera right there, Matt, and tell everybody in Flint what you hope to do with your life. Be a teacher and help other kids be what they want to be. And Matt, how are you going to do that? Get good grades. Are you going to study? Yeah. You promise? 
<laughs> okay, I'm sure that Mr. Conzer and Mr. Wilcox and everybody else here is happy to hear about that. Uh, we have to go for another timeout. We are going to come back and uh, interview uh, some more of the kids of the year, the class 2000. We'll do that right after this timeout. Back again at uh, Bentley Junior High School, Burton, Michigan, with the class of the year 2000 and uh, one of their instructors here, Mr. Cutter. Mr. Cutter, you've taught other uh, schools besides here. I understand that you also taught out in uh, Texas. Yeah, I taught two years in Rosenberg, Texas, and I've taught six years here at Bentley. And you, uh, you noticed something comparison to there to here, and that is the, 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 the children that you taught, the students that you taught. It was a, really a mixed bag, wasn't it? In Texas, we had about a 30-30-30 split of uh, the races, black, white, and Hispanic. Okay. In comparison to Texas to here, t teaching uh, these uh, young, young children, what, uh, was it easier to teach them? In Texas, it was quite a bit easier. Uh, the discipline problems, if there were any, you just alerted somebody and then they were removed from the classroom and then you could go about teaching. And it's a lot tougher here? Uh, there are times that, um, because of our staff sizes and things that if you have a disruption, sometimes you have to deal with it immediately on the spot and it takes teaching time out. For each, uh, you teach uh, 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 children within a certain increment of time and what is that from one class to the next? Uh, usually about a 50 minute class. Okay, so within that 50 minute class, if you have a, a youngster who's acting up, uh, how much time do you think you really are able to afford to the children who want to learn? Um, well, anywhere from three to five minutes per period is spent on uh, handling discipline problems, uh, doing paperwork, things like that, and it takes time out of your day. Yeah, you know, I, I, I uh, had mentioned this prior to, to going on to Mr. Cutter, and I, I uh, many moons ago, I had a close friend who was a teacher, and I got to tell you, I thought that you guys, all you had to do was just Monday through Friday, you know, pass out the homework. The, the, the assignments would come back and magically during school time, the, the teachers would grade them and then they would go home and watch TV like the rest of us, right? You think that, right? Yeah. yeah. Not so, gang. No. Not so. I got to tell you that f having known someone who is a teacher, that they put an awful long time into getting you ready for classes. Uh, Saturdays and Sundays, many times, uh, my friend would be spending uh, over the kitchen table getting ready uh, with tests or grading homework from, uh, from the week before, right? Exactly. Uh, just for an example, if uh, I give one test to one group, most of my other groups take the same test the same day, so I don't have to worry about them trading answers back and forth. I could go home and check anywhere from, you know, 50 to 100 tests a night. Mm -hmm. So your teacher is actually doing homework, too, at the same time. Do you ever think about that? Yeah. 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 Let's talk about the disruptive kids. Let's talk about uh, uh, their parents. When you uh, bring a, a parent in or you, you try to reach a parent and tell them uh, Johnny has been really you know, uh, disruptive. Uh, disruptive in class, of course, we could say a few other things. Uh, what is the, the parent's initial reaction? Uh, it varies. Sometimes they'll um, ask their student, you know, or their child, you know, is this what's happening? And most of the time the kid's going to say, well, no, that's not the story. This is what it was. And then the parent has to decide, you know, which one is giving the, you know, the honest and truthful answer. And, most of the time, the parents are really supportive. If we have a problem, we mention it to them. They, you know, do what they can to take care of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are the occasions that we don't get any support. This is your chance uh, within this last period to, to address the students here and, and let them know that uh, I think that the, the teachers here at Bentley Junior High really, really do care, don't they, about where they're going in life? Yeah, that's, that's why we're in here. We're certainly not in here for the pay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, my friend uh, was not driving around in a Maserati, I can tell you that, that's for sure. Um, I thank you very much for, for being here today. 
And we have some more uh, uh, questions coming out from the class of the year 2000. Now, we, we did have somebody out here who uh, was going to answer uh, one, of, one of the big questions I think we should throw out is, what is a learning line? Okay. All right, we have Angela, right? Angela, your last name? Full Force. You want to stand up for me? Angela, what is a learning line? It's like a phone message that a teacher will say, you dial in your like number for your homeroom, and it would come on and tell you what your homework um, for that day is. So that means if you're sick or whatever reason that you can't come to school that day, at least you can find out what your studies are, right? Yes. Okay, great. Thanks, Angela. By the way, what do you want to become? What do you want to uh, do with your life? A pediatrician nurse. All right. And how are you going to do that? Go to college. You got it. So you're making the best of education, right? Yes. Great. Uh, now, this is a toughie. Uh, do you think that sex education and age should be taught in school? Yes. Huh? Yes. Uh, I bet you that's a real shocker for some parents that are, uh, that are sitting home today, this Sunday morning. Now, why, anybody want to answer this? Why should that be taught in school? You are? Matthew Davidson. Matthew, why should that be taught in school? I think that the kids should learn about how to have safe sex or not how to get AIDS. That's really important? Yes. Boy, I got to tell you, uh, I'm looking at uh, uh, some of the teachers over here, and times have changed, haven't they? Drastically. <laughs> Indeed. These are children that are... Um, about 10, 12 years old, somewhere in that, that ballpark. I didn't think about stuff like that when I was that age. How about you? No, but you know you look at it, and technology changed everything. We've got to stay up with, uh, quote, the times. Mm -hmm. And I think that's obvious. When I, when I sit here as, a, as kind of an observer and I see these young students uh, interact with you and say, yes, we are concerned, I think it's, it tells me a lot about what they're all about. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so, but I, 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 I'm sure that there are going to be some adults watching this morning that are going to be totally blown away by, by what these kids had to say. It's, it's, it's kind of shocking, isn't it? I agree with you 100%. Well, we have to wrap it up for this morning, but first a big thank you to our teachers, Joseph Conzer, Mr. Cutter, and Mr. Wilcox, for allowing us to meet the graduating class of the year 2000. What message can we leave with you, the students of the future, and the students watching at home today? You intend to go to college? Yes! yes. How are you going to do that? Education! And there you have it. This is Tom Crown with the class of the year 2000. We'll see you in two weeks.